Okay, everyone. Uh, our first talk of the afternoon will be by Antonella Grassi, and she will tell us about the spectrum of elliptic Kalabi R3 folds. Thank you. Thank you for the invitations, and thank you to the organizers for the wonderful organization. Um, so I found out an uh, emulator gave a talk in Bologna in 1928, uh, the International Congress of Mathematicians. So not quite 100 years, but uh, almost. And she spoke in one of the parallel sections. And that's the title. And we know the fields was the moderator of the talk. And we know also from the notes in Italian that the session went smoothly. Uh, and there was another parallel section this year. And I asked my colleagues in Bologna if I found out who she talked to, if she talked in particular to the physicist because of her theorem that we'll hear in the next hours. And um, the evidence is mixed. So the answer is we don't know. But she gave this talk and of the talk in German, I noticed this talk, uh, the paper is one page, pa two page papers has now been translated into English. And um, according to Matt, Matt Sainet has 10 citations. But Sapiri is not translated in English. But anyway, from the title, I picked up uh, the word, that one, which I don't dare to pronounce, but it should be representation theory. And together with her work on uh, physicists on the com on physics on the con uh, conservation law from which we can get gauge theory i would like to think these are sort of rings that puts together all the various topics that i'll be talking about today so elliptic vibration uh, high energy physics string theory birational geometry and in the middle calabia variety that's more or less the plan of the talk, uh, synthetic. Uh, this year was also another centenary. Uh, um, last month, Eugenio Calabi turned 100 and he was born in Milano. And he's also mostly famous from another very short communication which he gave an International Congress of Mathematics. That was 1954. It's uh, uh, one page even shorter than Emmy Nutter, um, and it's in English, and gives, states a theorem, and then it says the proof proceeds by. So there is no claim of being a proof. It says the proof proceeds by. And the essence of the theorem is this one. So it's about complex geometry, Kähler geometry. So Let's see if I get this one. M is complex. If it works, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. <laughs> M is work. Uh, M is complex. Kähler and um, rho is the Ricci form. C1 is the first chain class. A theorem is well known that the Ricci form is in that particular class. The theorem essentially says, can we go the other way? And the motivation, um, so particular case then we're interested when C1 is equal to zero. So we can take a class, actually the zero class and the theorem says and the, there is a unique Keller metric exactly, which is Ricci flat. So motivation implications. So one as mathematician, it's natural. So we always ask is the converse true, yes or no. And, but it uh, was behind this also the Einstein theory of relativity. In fact, with a little bit of thinking, one can translate this, not quite translate it, but spin it off in Kähler-Einstein metric. But we won't talk about that today. There are other experts here in the audience, not me. So uh, 1957, uh, Calabi, uh, again, the volume in honor of Lefschetz, who was here a professor at Princeton, uh, proves the uniqueness of the metric and um, has some doubts about the existence. So the Calabi conjecture is born. Uh, fast forward and uh, Calabi uh, and Yao 1976 solves the conjectures. 
and Terry Oban had solved a particular case for C1 uh, negative, so the general type. So, particular example, one uh, in P4, we can take the Fermat, just all the powers in P4, that's a threefold for R equal uh, five, we have C1 equals zero, and for all the others, the theorem holds. Uh, I gave an example of these are projective algebraic. We might want to ask the questions, are all such M, which satisfies Calabi, Yao, uh, projective algebraic? So, and we're concentrating on the case C1 equals zero. So there is a theorem, actually it comes from holonomy, classification on holonomy group. Um, and essentially for simply, we're looking at simply connected one, there are two types. One on the left, the holonomy is the SP, a symplectic group, and the other is holonomy SUN. And the claim is the one that have holonomy SUN are projective algebraic. And for the first one, so the holonomy, I just put the holonomy uh, on the Levit Civita connection. So I found this picture and I put it up. The proof, the first one, the one there, um, the one on the, uh, the first one on the left, Calabi named them hypercalar and gave some examples. From the other ones, the one with SUN um, are, uh, which I didn't want to mean, uh, the Calabi Yao manifold with SUN, which this doesn't work. Well, let's see if I can do that. That works. For n greater or equal to three are projective algebraic. And the proof is exactly like what we heard in the uh, second lecture Monday by Eva. So this, this, there is no transcendental lattice. So uh, it can all be embedded in a projective space. And we're working over the complex numbers. So take one. Uh, I. I meant to say this one, this page got shuffled, uh, apologies. Fast forward, fast forward to a couple of uh, few years later, no International Congress of Mathematicians, here we're physicists, they're physicists. So this group of physicists uh, in 1985 talked about uh, uh, superstring vacuum, so spaces of interest for the superstring. And they say that spaces of interest are these objects which they call uh, Calabiao. And this is the first name, the first place in their paper where the name Calabiao comes in. So this is in 1985. And so this is, right. So the Calabiao are, and this is, uh, my favorite picture and I took uh, the University of Pennsylvania when Yao came to give uh, the Radamacher lectures. And this is, I understand the first picture of the two of them together. And this sadly to say is 100 divided four years ago, <laughs> but, but there, so this page has had to go before. So that's why the name Calab, I'm using now Calabiao give the definition uh, manifold. So first manifold and dimension n, trivial canonical bundle, and I'm writing it as an algebra geometers like that, but then we want to uh, go from manifold to variety in algebraic geometry. So algebraic varieties, Calabiao, dimension n, essentially the same condition. And we're also adding singularities and the singularities are terminal or KLT. And uh, good thing I'm speaking on a Thursday, other people have used not quite this word, but close to that. So um, they're using the minimal model program we saw yesterday in Jane's talk. In Ishi's talk, she talked about log canonical. Mm -hmm. uh, log canonical, she said they are kind of uh, minimally acceptable and <laughs> the KLT, uh, they go to limit to log canonical. And, um, 
James talked about canonical singularities, so terminals are, I'll go to the limit to the canonical one. To be concrete, in dimension two, terminal is smooth, uh, canonical, uh, um, KLT are quotients, just quotient singularity, but we will not be using that. But anyway, we've not used the technicality, uh, the technicalities. Now, that's a very great question. So in the, um, and I'm going to, I hope I'll answer during the talk, yeah. We, physicists start with food because that's a simple thing. Uh, and, but then it turns out, and in fact there's singularities, which singularities do we want? So as an algebraic geometer who study minimum program is natural to say, and the Calabi hour building blocks of uh, the classification, uh, one would say, then we learn that terminal singularities are needed on the minimal model. So as, uh, let's say as a default, let's take that one as an algebraic geometer. But for physicists in physics, this is one of my favorite paper. This is also old, but um, it's uh, a paper on moduli stabilizations. Uh, X was a Calabi-Yau fourfold, and the physicist had a lot of model by rational equivalence of minimal calabi house, nice, a lot of nice, smooth models, minimal, useless for the physics. But it turned out that with some transformations, some flips, we could make a, a model with terminal singularities. And the model with really with these singularities was the good one. For, from the point of view of physics. So not the smooth one, but one with terminal singularity. So at least this is a little bit of an explanation and at least terminal is, uh, we should consider that at least. But then, but then there. Now, in a uh, paper, I don't know, I don't remember if that one or another one, the question that the physicists posed is which integers can appear as the topological Euler characteristic of this calabi -Yau. And uh, this is related to uh, the question of the spectrum, which I'm going to talk about later. Topological Euler is one of the objects that appears in the spectrum. Now, they hoped, uh, there were a handful, at least I'm told, although I don't know, but it's still uh, sort of from an algebra geometer, one could think, topologist even, this is not so unrealistic because if we look at surfaces, uh, Riemann surfaces with trivial canonical, well, there is only one in dimension two when the topological Euler characteristic was smooth, there are not so many either, so why not for triple, right? But, it turns out that Schoen in the late 80s, so two years later, produced papers with a lot of uh, topological Euler characteristics. He built an example which gave a wild range in a very big interval. So, so much for that, um, Beauville reviews the paper in the math sign. He says, unfortunately for the physicist, et cetera. But, but, uh, and then later, uh, Kreutzer and Skarker did uh, searches in Turing uh, settings. And the searches suggested that there is this bound on the topological Euler characteristic and also on the spectra. And evidence from the searches that many of the Calabi-Yau are elliptically fibers. Now, since then, the searches have been refined and used. So, uh, artificial intelligence and other things, then I'm not competent, but uh, they mean the fine. And I copied these pictures from, uh, yeah, from a survey article of last year's, and the pictures is the horizontal line is the H11, the vertical one is the H21, and these are the ones which are hypersurfaces in toric. There are uh, several millions. Um, we see there is, uh, there seems to be an obvious bound, right, on them. And the red ones are 
the ones that do not have any obvious elliptic vibration. So the large ma majority is, is elliptically fibered. And uh, if one looks, and that's a dot on the bottom of the page, on complete intersection, these have uh, complete intersection, Calabiao, there are 99.3% that have obvious elliptic vibration. Why? Question. But um, now what's an elliptic vibration? I use this word, so might as well put a definition. It's the only decent putting a definition. So what do I mean? Uh, X is this uh, variety, let's say Calabiao to say, uh, maps to a threefold, maps to a surface, on a dense open set, the inverse image is a torus, an elliptic curve, which may or may not be marked. And then we'll see later uh, what it means. Uh, the places where uh, the discriminant, uh, where the, the fiber is not a torus, so where the fibers degenerate, is called a discriminant, and it's uh, stratified as a natural stratification structure. So the uh, singular elliptic fibers are over the inverse image of this discriminant. Uh, now questions. Uh, I'll be looking, so I'll be looking at the spectra, not general of Calabiao, but the what's called the F theory spectra. So X with singularities, singularities will determine and roughly gauge groups, we'll see what it means correspond to the geom property of the geometry. And what I like to do is try to discuss a little bit what we know about this correspondence. And this has been a research program from more almost a quarter for a century that I've been working on. So, uh, so this spectrum of F theory. So we go back to the, uh, to the physics and um, the physics suggests so that to this object, this Calabiao on which the theory is compactified, there is a gauge theory, somehow a quantum field theory and suggests there exists a correspondence and this is from the mid eighties from Lie algebra U1, certain representation and the geometry of a smooth Calabiao and this time they were assumed to have a section of oh, it. So evidence and uh, in the string literature, so essentially these are the program what was done for a long time. So give uh, assignments, ad hoc assignments. So situation is this, we give an algebra and um, representation mostly check via dualities, physics dualities, verify consistency for the assignments, again, for smooth and case by case. And then uh, one thing uh, they verify that by changing the birational model over the base, then the assignments do not change. So some sort of birational invariant. And then also they verify consistency. So the consistency of the assignment for physics, one of them in this case that I considered um, means that the algebra and the representation have to satisfy the various anomaly. And this particular anomaly is what's called the Green-Schwartz um, anomaly formula. Okay, so this is more or less a program of what I've been working on and um, maybe I'll leave it for a board for a second when I take a sip of water and then So before going on and being in the details, entering into the details, I uh, Oh, part of the program. What I'll do at the end is that the boundless uh, theorem uh, proved uh, very recent imply bounds for also for object, for most of the object in the spectrum, for the object in the spectrum. And now the questions in mathematics would be find the explicit bounds. And in physics, this is related to this one 
planned program. So, to do, I decided to do the opposite of what was, we were told at the beginning, right? That, uh, I don't know, very abstract or example. So instead of giving a general setup, I'll start with examples. Uh, uh, bank, yeah. Uh, bounds, I haven't said that, on object, explicit bounds on object on the spectrum, which we see. And uh, so one of the ones that I'll be looking at is, for example, the rank of the murder veil. Um, uh, so for, I start from the example and I'll pick up what Carolina did uh, yesterday. So she blew up, blew up P2 and uh, points are picking up P2, blowing up for the intersection of two smooth cubics. And um, nine was the maximal points. And it turns out exactly that uh, blowing up this point, this nine minus one curves uh, generates their, uh, the infinite boundary of the cone that you were talking about, and because they are uh, element of the rank of the Mortevale group, which is in this case is uh, eight. So this is an, an example of an elliptic vibration with a section. I talk about the discriminant. Uh, in, if we take in general, uh, there are 12 nodal singular elliptic fibers, and all of this is well known. Uh, a very concrete example is this one. So I picked, uh, uh, not general, I picked exactly two, two very explicit cubic, and out of them, their algorithm, why can, one can really uh, look what P looks like, uh, the surface, which is this one here, as a vibration on uh, P1. In this case, the singular fibers uh, has our cusps, they look like that. Locally, there are six of them, and again, this, there, there are sections. One can also easily construct examples without sections, taking what they're called the alphanspe pencil, but I won't dwell on them, but just they, they exist. And in this case, we get multiple fibers. So now from surfaces to threefold. So instead of writing equation, I'm doing a cartoon, uh, the language that I learned from my friend, the physicist, but it's, uh, useful, I hope it's clear. Um, so this, unfortunately, I don't get the, the highlighter, but from here, from the left and the right, I'm taking uh, two copies of the, the first rational elliptic surfaces, like the one in Carolina's example with 12 nodes, and we take the uh, product uh, B over B over P1, uh, and again, and this is a smooth uh, threefold, turns out to be Calabi-Yau, and turns out that this is, again, more the veil equal eight. And this is simply connected, and uh, it's smooth, and it's a calabi -Yau. So this is one example. Uh, and this is Schoen, the one who gave the first example of the many topological Euler characteristic, constructed them like this. Took uh, two rational elliptic surfaces with different singular fiber and then smash the fibers together in a way to resolve them to smooth Calabi-Yau three for and it got a plethora of different Calabi-Yau with different Euler characteristic, characteristics. And there is a one which was not found by Schoen, uh, but was found later by Namikawa and Rossi studying problem of uh, deformation theory. And it's essentially is the one equation that I gave the details. So B is like this, as 12 cusps is the one like this. And two identical copies of Bs like this. The singularities are those, the red points where the two cusps coincide are red points. And in this case, these are non-Q factorial singularities uh, that can be resolved. And they can be resolved by two small exceptional blow ups. And the property is that the rank of the Mordeveil of this 
threefold is 10. And as far as we know, this is the highest uh, rank of Mordevelo, of Acalabia, that can be produced. And we have, I'll get back to this one here because it has interesting property, properties. So a lot of interest, different things happen for when we go from Calabria to uh, threefolds, to from surfaces to threefolds. For example, uh, this is a B is the base, is again a cartoon in the base with the discriminant. And we could have isolated terminal singularity, like the fiber, for example, a node over a node in the base get a singularities or the fibers in co-dimension one degenerate. So there are a lot of interesting properties uh, that can happen. We can also have multiple fi fibers like this example here. In that case, that won't be a section, but we know that multiple fibers for Calabiao uh, appears on isolated points. And in those cases, when appears this, at least this type here, uh, the base has to be singular. Now, um, Kodaira, go, going back, going back to dimension two, uh, Kodaira classified up to by rational equivalence, which mean of minimal models, it classified um, the type of elliptic, of singular uh, elliptic fiber, which can happen. And this is its classifications. Uh, so, there is an, there are infinite series and a finite type of them. And um, what would be the starting point from the geometry to the gauge theory is, and it's in dimension two, this uh, dual graph of the fibers, uh, they give uh, semi-simple Lie algebras, which are simply laced. So, this could be, that's, uh, that's a first step. Again, this is somewhat still mysterious, but that's the first step where concretely we see uh, a link, a connection between the geometry and the gauge theory. And the physics says th this, is the, this is the right one. Uh, Kodaira also says that from minimal models, then there is, what he proves is the uh, canonical divisor formula, so the, Canonical is the pullback or something from the base. And essentially, which means that the, uh, the geometry of the threefold is related to the geometry of the base and with this divisor with a discriminant. Up to threefold. So, in threefolds, one has to be careful, and I put up here some list of examples where things go wrong, could possibly go wrong. So even if uh, threefold is smooth, we have um, X to B, uh, X B smooth. There are examples where we cannot get, even with K over the same base, uh, the canonical divisor formula to hold. That happens. And then there is also have example where the fiber, the vibration is not equidimensional. So we have divisor over points. And uh, also um, in general, uh, the, on the singularities of the discriminant, uh, the fiber changes and the description of the fibers is not difficult to see, dependent on the choice of the relative minimal models. So one could get a plethora of examples. And they're not necessary of Kodaira type. Like in this case here, where we see before, this is a very, very concrete example. This happens of F4, the Hirzebrook surface over F4, very concrete. We have already have this example here, the fiber in pink on the left, which is not on Kodaira type. Okay, so all theorems, uh, part actually of my thesis, uh, and which I'm stating in here just for Calabiao to be concrete. So the Calabiao is uh, for Calabiao threefold, we can get a birational model where we have the formula of the canonical uh, fiber of the canonical, uh, the canonical product. So canonical of X is the pullback 
And um, without multiple fiber, the base is, could be chosen to be smooth. Otherwise, a rational double point grows uh, in 94 uh, said actually that prove that the singularity can only, are only be of type a n minus one. And it's also true that the base is equity mentioned. So, um, now, all of this, this spectrum. Having said all this language, I can go back and talk about what is the spectrum and I will do in the examples. So, uh, the gauge algebra. So again, this is from physics, uh, X, the results from physics, X Calabiao smooth, B smooth again. And then uh, the claim is there is a naturally associated gauge algebra, which looks like this, where uh, SJ are the co-dimension one the divisorial component of the discriminant and a semi-simple the algebra associated to it or a twisted algebra, which is a quotient of it. And uh, R, R is rank or the Mordevel group. This is the starting point, the gauge algebra associated to the, uh, associated to, to the model. And then uh, there is also, this is a little bit, uh, the physics is still in progress and the research is still in progress. So I put it in quotation mark. There is also a discrete part, which is related to the index of a multi-section if there is not a section. Um, hmm? uh, you want? No, you want. You want. This is like you want. Oh, you want. Oh, you want. I see. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And what are the G that we associated? So essentially, we go in codimension. These are codimension ones, so this divisorial component, because of Bertini over the general point, we get a smooth surface, Calabiao, so it's minimum. We can look at Kodaira classification, we get the Lie algebra. But then that is not, uh, we get that one, but then there might be equivalence. And that's one, when it gets uh, interesting, how to actually associate the correct quotients. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's a question, but that, that's the story. So now the spectra. So, yeah. Uh, these are, the algebras, but they come from like the divisorial components of the discriminant. That's right. How do you obtain? Is there, uh, could you say something about how the, the algebras themselves are obtained? Is there like a recipe for obtaining? It's a very good question. And in this uh, paper, which we started writing in 2016, put in the archive 2019, and we're still revising it. We are writing, hopefully we'll come up before the end of the summer. We are writing up uh, all equivalent methods to associate this algebra. So we work very hard uh, in part to extend it to KLT singularities also, because we think that at least with intersection, that's the right setup. So we had to work really hard also with intersection uh, using property. We needed Poincaré duality. So we really needed to look at where Poincaré duality holds in particular. Yeah. And there are other methods um, which we state in the papers. One of the methods is using Gopakuma var invariance, but using to on mirrors. So there is no way to do it right straight on the Calabiao uses uh, and I'm not straight in the Calabiao. And we don't talk about that in the paper except giving it a reference. So what are the objects in the spectra? So uh, one is the, this again, smooth, 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 uh, H1 of X, so the Picard, uh, H1 of B, H11 of B, the base, and then uh, the sum of the dimension of, uh, oh, I put, anyway, the dimension of GI minus the rank. The dimension goes inside. Yeah. 
This is correct. So does the other one, the T are called the tensor multiplets, and then there are the hyper multiplets, which uh, come into part the charge and the non uncharged. The uncharged half B3, uh, complex deformation. Um, question is, what are the charge? The question, what, what is the charge? That's a uh, other interesting part. What are the charge multiplets? And uh, the physics says that a gravitational anomaly must hold. So when one picks all this quantity, subtract it and add them up, multiply by 21, one gets 273. Turns out, unraveling um, for Calabi-Yau, this is related to at least the 273. It's a result of Noether the father. So it's Noether's formula for surfaces um, that gives this one, assuming uh, at least for where the 273 should come out from. Now, fast forward. Oh, 2022, maybe it was 2021. I got the year wrong, right? 2021. 2021. Uh, Philip Pazzi Hakens building on work of Gross, says there are only finite, finitely many topological types of elliptic Calabi out triple. Fine. So the physicists were right after all. There is only a finite number of topological order characteristics. Plausible. Plausible from looking at looking at the data, it says that, but it's very hard to prove that it's not. So one of the nice arguments that one could make is that from something not elliptic, we can do something to get it elliptic. Uh, Something non trivial. That's, that's and it works in, in a lot of cases, but um, makes it mathematics. So, uh, so the quantity, because it's uh, at this point, we just look at the uh, what's inside. So, most of the H11 then it will be bounded, right? Uh, H21 will be bounded. So, most of the quantities here are bounded in the spectrum. It's left that. H uncharged, uh, H charged, then we don't know what it is. And so, but if the anomaly cancellation holds, uh, then also the H charge is bounded. So now in particular, so that's the first thing I want to talk about the uh, spectrum is their result says that the rank of the motor veil is bounded because pick is bound and Shioda's formula. The physicist using the Swampland uh, program, in a way, argument that I still need to digest, but it's physics, physics, but uh, they say uh, that the rank of Mordeveil is less than 20 when B is not P2 and less than 24 when B is P2. But the estimates are always, are very, generous, they're clearly not sharp. So not clearly, they're very likely not be sharp. So why should we believe this? So we go down to the case of the, the Swampland argument for the case of K3. And that gives that the rank of the Mordeveil is equal 18. So short-lived conjecture sort of because it was proved by Cox in 82 that there indeed this is the bound and there exists K3 with that Mordeveil rank and later it was actually proved non-constructive but later it was really constructed for every number uh, the rank on the Mordeveil. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's for threefold, uh, we don't know. The example that we know, we go up to 10. So up to eight is relatively, they come relatively easy. Up to nine also, up to 10 is uh, this one that we constructed. And um, also I'm putting up the comments a physics argument 
I saw two different arguments when I looked in the literature for the index of a multi-section. They say it's bounded, and one argument is says a less or equal than six, and the other less or equal than 24. Clearly, I don't know, clearly they work under the hypothesis. So it'd be interesting to find out under which hypothesis work. And the largest constructed is, it's a, uh, um, five actually, I didn't write wrong, five. And this is without isolated multiple fibers. So that's probably one of the, one of the hypotheses. Um, so I wanna go back and like look at this spectrum in some concrete example. And one example that uh, is the one that we did with uh, my collaborator based on the one of the Nami Kamarovsky. So smashing together two rational elliptic surfaces and getting this, uh, this resolution. So what we needed to find out is uh, H21, the complex deformation, not too difficult, three. H11, 21, not too difficult. So what's G? We're going to look at the co-dimension one at the discriminant. So this here is the discriminant. So these are the, the cuspidal coming from the other where the cusps are, the co-dimension one. Uh, over it, it's just a cusp. It doesn't have any gauge algebra. So G is equal E trivial in this case. There is no semi-simple algebra. And then the rank of the Morday veil here is equal uh, 10. So we put uh, U1 to the 10. The, this is the, but then what are the uh, H charge? So we know that the fibers degenerate over the cuspidal points and over the cuspidal points, we have like three lines getting together. And uh, what are the H charged? So the A charge, it turns out the physics expect they are the, the relative genus zero Gopakuma Rubafa invariants. And they were already computed. Uh, we apply to this case. And it turns out that the A charge is actually the sum of this Kopakuma Wafa invariant, so something geometric, topologically. We sum it and actually we verify, we check that the anomaly cancellation is actually verified. And we verified another abelian anomaly, which is more complicated. And in front of arithmetic number theorist, I don't want to talk about it. So, but for a geometer's point of view, uh, again, back to Carolina, an example, this is, uh, this here was P2 blown up on nine point. We can contract it to P2. And what turns out, we can get a model. We can get a fun model over P2, a birational equivalent model over P2. And this is canonical non-Q factorial singularities. And this is a inter very interesting model from uh, arithmetic properties. So I won't get into there in public, but I hope I'll understand that at some point. And this is like one of the questions of the singularity, which comes on with. So this is probably an interesting model to study on its own. Then like an, another example here to see what the spectra looks like. So we we'll look at here, uh, that's again an example of a discriminant that I put before. So here we have over the general point here, so which is this point here, we don't have, uh, again, it's a, it, it's a node. So we don't have any gauge algebra. But here we do have a gauge algebra. So G will be at, um, an SO8 because this fiber will correspond to the Kodaira one at an SO8. There is no, um, there is no quotient. All the, all the fibers are, all the curves don't, don't get identified. And there is a particular point Q1 here the, where there are two fiber identified. And in this case here, to Q1, uh, we get actually the vector representation. 
the vector representation of SOA. And there is a way here again, so one thing we can look at the paper is actually give an algorithm how to actually identify these. Um, then the uncharged ones, if here we have a singularity, the uncharged one turns out to be uh, the correct to assign as actually the Milner number of P. And this we know we can do because Calabi-Yau terminal singularities are hypersurface singularities, so they're isolated, so we can compute the Milner number. However, from the point of view of philosophically, because the uncharged, uh, the uncharged uh, hypermultiplets correspond to the complex deformation, correspond to complex deformation because of the local, local to global sequence, which I put here. Uh, for Calabi-Yau, there are really the Turina number which they come in. So the, 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 these are the local deformations of the singularities. And the question is, in the example then we have, the Turina is always equal to the Milner. But this is something, again, one of the questions to be investigated. What's the correct quantity in the spectrum? So this is the quote from the paper that I was saying, put on the archive in 2018, uh, being on private revisions uh, until now. And hopefully, I mean, it won't be long until we'll be in at least a reasonable a, a stopping point. And we assume that the uh, locus of the multiple fiber, which are points, uh, don't intersect on the, they're not in the divisorial components. And then here we write what this charge multiplets are expected to be. And we give an algorithm to say uh, what they are and how to, Computer. So part of it is uh, what I already talked about it. So the co dimension one points, gauge algebras, and on over the points uh, of uh, discriminants, where we have uh, in co dimension two, the discriminants, uh, multi representations of all J algebra that come together or we have representation also again of the U1. So somehow the existence of sections also gives uh, charge multiplets in a way that we can make precise. So, um, and this is what I'm just writing here. When I was uh, reading about, um, Calabi, I actually ended up reading, uh, finding a letter that um, Ricci, Ricci Gurbastro, wrote to his collaborator, uh, Levi Civita. Uh, and he asked a question, but unfortunately there is not the answer. So <laughs> the question that Ricci asked was, I have to give a talk of math related to physics and I have the risk to either say fluff, he actually uses the local dialect, or uh, fill up the blackboard with formulas and ask advice to Levi Civita uh, what to do. <laughs> Unfortunately, there is no answer, so I couldn't take any guide on what to do. <laughs> so anyway, so this is what I, I'm putting now, I'm putting now here. And um, so what I'm putting here is, so the conjecture from the physics is actually that uh, the charge, multi ah, conjecture of the physics is a big word. So again, for the physics, as I have a collection of examples in many of these boot cases. So we put together like this uh, formula, uh, which are the representation over the co-dimension one points, the multi-representations, which of uh, at the point stratified of the discriminant. And then these are coming up from the Gopakumar Bafa invariant. Uh, charge when there are sections. And all these points can actually uh, coincide. And 
the result is that this geometry, this anomaly, the grand, uh, the anomaly geometric, uh, the anomaly cancellation uh, formula can actually uh, be translated in something uh, geometric. So, and this is what we call the geometric anomaly transformation, which is this formula here, which is th this formula here. And we verified it works under, um, under general condition. So the claim is, and what we do in this papers, and I'm just uh, summarizing is that there exists assignments. So we can define the spectrum with the assignment, the geometric anomaly cancellation holds under certain condition. And one of the parts that I'm particularly fond of is that the quantities in this formula, in the right-hand side of the formula, are actually a birational invariant of the minimal model. So if we go down in the strata of the discriminants, these uh, they determine a fiber and they actually do determine the fiber. So it's an invariant of the minimal model. The shape of the fiber won't be because it can change, but this representation associated, these numbers, the dimension of the representation is actually an invariance and they're actually bounded. So uh, this is a list of the collaborators. So the first collaborator was the Morrison from 19, a project from 1996 to 2010. And then uh, a sequence of other collaborators where we uh, looked at various different properties, looking at the assignments. And I want to conclude going back to Aminotur and the Notarian rings. So one of these collaborators, so Andrew Turner, which is on the last line, is involved in a project which is called Oscar System, which is a computer pro project, I think, based in Germany, where uh, in particular it codes in all the models that have been found with all the representations. And again, this is, a, this is a program that really uses algebra. Back to Germany, back to Noether. And I wanna conclude with one historical note. Um, so back to Bologna, Emmy Noether spoke in Bologna. She was not the first woman uh, to lecture in mathematics or in physics in Bologna because 150, just about 150 years uh, before, uh, the equivalent of a president of the university insisted to give positions, which then turned into professorships, to two women, uh, were Laura Bassi and then um, Ganetana Agnese. And then uh, I wanna conclude just putting back the and Minotaur's papers from Bologna. So. Questions? So when you're looking for a good minimal model for your theory, are you essentially trying to find a model with a Gauge group with certain properties, or maybe with some some specific topological properties, or, or what are you looking for? For the for uh, for models, for interest, let's say interesting interesting prop. Um, well, depends. If you start with a Calabiao, then we'll be given. We're looking for a model which is equidimensional, so and the singularities are uh, terminal, and uh, those exist, and we analyze those. So I meant to say, going back to your answer about singularity. So in this paper, we worked very hard also the first part of the paper about uh, extending the property of K and T singularities, because we believed uh, they have actually interesting information about uh, the spectrum that can be looked at the singularities before the resolution. But that's working for us.
And then what was so interesting about that one non Q factorial model? No, the non Q factorial model. Oh, the, 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 this one here, there's a um, this thing here, yeah. The singularities are, uh, yeah, this one here, the one that we go down with the two, uh, has the interesting properties because if one wants to look at the coefficients, uh, so there is at least wrote up a series of examples of P2, which are not necessarily probably algos, which are seems really strictly causing of ours. And the properties, the coefficients, but the, we can't quite say they are the same. And the properties of the coefficients are arithmetic properties. They are in this, um, they're very famous, they're very famous coefficients. And, um, From good representation theory is the over F2 and F3. So, which is kind of interesting that we should look up there. Yeah. So, the one that is does the non necessary Calabiao, the one where we do are not, they look like very similar, but they don't have, we can't see, they have the interesting arithmetic properties, but they seem like very closely related. So, Okay, let's thank the speaker again. Okay.